Did you know that digital devices like your computer or cell phone can negatively impact the health of your eyes depending on how you use them? In this episode of OcuTalk, Dr. Shelby Brogdon will be teaching us all about digital eye strain, the signs and symptoms to look out for, and some solutions to alleviate the pains associated with computer vision syndrome. Dr. Brogdon? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us. Please welcome Dr. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us. Everyone, please welcome Dr. Shelby Brogdon. Dr. Brogdon, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Well, uh, we're glad to have you here, Dr. Brogdon. Thank you again for joining us today. Uh, Dr. Brogdon, before we get into our conversation today, I was kind of hoping maybe you can uh, introduce yourself a little bit to our audience, let them uh, know a little bit about your background and your specialty. Yeah, so my name is Shelby Brogdon, and I'm an optometrist uh, here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, I graduated um, my undergraduate degree from Arkansas State University, and then I went down to the University of the Incarnate Word in San Antonio for optometry school. And I practice at McFarland Eye Care, which is an ODMD practice, and I lead our dry eye clinic there. Well, excellent introduction there, Dr. Brogdon. Thank you again for joining us today. Uh, so for our discussion, we were kind of hoping you could talk to us a little bit about uh, digital eye strain or kind of computer vision syndrome. What, what exactly is digital eye strain? So digital eye strain is a combo of both visual and ocular symptoms just from prolonged device use, whether it's computer or iPhone or tablets, um, just that long-term use um, can definitely result in some some strain. Well, excellent. Thank you for letting us know about computer vision syndrome. And uh, so what causes digital eye strain? So like I said, um, both ocul ocular and visual symptoms. So on the ocular side of things, think about your health of your eyeballs. So we actually blink less on digital devices. And so our eyes are open longer in between each blink. So that results in tear film instability. And that can result in dryness, watering, itching, um, and even blurry vision that kind of comes and goes. And then you have the visual side of things too, just from focusing too long on the computer without taking breaks. And that can cause eye strain and headaches and fatigue. Um, sometimes even double vision, blurry vision, and that both of those things tend to get worse as the day goes on, the longer that you're on, on your digital device. Well, fascinating. I didn't know that uh, we blink less while we're staring at the uh, digital things. So that's very interesting. And so, uh, Dr. Brogdon, who's at risk for getting digital eye strain? So anyone who uses a digital device and, you know, these days that could be <laughs> from birth almost, um, but basically anyone who's using a phone, an iPad, tablet, um, computer um, is at risk. And so, that, I mean, that's toddler to 103, you know, or however old. Um, and definitely during the pandemic, we've definitely seen a lot more education, you know, on digital devices too. So definitely our children are a lot more at risk than they have been previously. I will definitely, definitely. I, I know my two-year-old watches YouTube all the time, so I know I got to get them off of it every once in a while. <laughs> but yes. thank you for that information, Dr. Brogdon. Uh, and so what are the signs or symptoms of digital eye strain that we should be on the lookout for? Um, so kind of like I already mentioned a little bit, um, that dryness, watering, irritation, itchiness, just overall, like just feeling like you need to blink those eyes. Um, and that gets worse at the end of the day. And then, you know, blurring, things being out of focus, that kind of strain right there on your temples, even a headache. And I mean, there's non-ocular symptoms too, like a neck ache, fatigue, back ache. Um, those kind of all play a factor in, you know, how you're using your devices too. Well, definitely, definitely. And um, so how could, uh, well, I guess you talked a little bit about it, but uh, once you get all of those symptoms, so how, how could you like self-diagnose or how, how do you diagnose digital eye strain at your office? Well, when I have a patient in the chair, first thing I do is I just listen, <laughs> listen to their complaints. Um, 
are they having some of those complaints that we talked about? And one thing I love to do, which I think people may get caught off guard with, is, is just discussing their work environment. Um, I think I kind of start grilling them on some questions like, how far away do you sit from the computer screen? What's your lighting like? How many screens do you have? Um, you know, how far, you know, how far away or what angle is your computer at? And they're like, why are you asking me all these questions? Well, kind of gives me an idea of, of how they're using their eyes throughout the day. And my one question, my first question is always, how long are you on a digital device? Um, and then kind of getting kind of that aspect. And then during my exam, obviously testing for any refractive error or prescription and glasses they may need. And then also testing their ability to, we call accommodate and converge. So those are two big things that we do up close, which is focus our eyes and turn our eyes in. So making sure that that's all working well too. Well, I know you got to have to be kind of a detective in those type of things, kind of figure out what's going on. So that's, that's pretty awesome. Um, and so I, I know that a, a lot with, you know, looking at digital screens, there's, there could be risks, like with anything like we do with digital stuff, there, there could be risks. So um, what are the risk factors that we should probably know of? And could this cause dry eye, like you said earlier? Yeah, definitely. So risk factors, I would say the number one thing that's going to increase your risk for digital eye strain is the time that you spend on digital devices. I mean, directly correlates. Um, but kind of like reduction in um, contrast. So if you don't have good contrast on what you're looking at, um, you know, what distance you're using, do you wear your glasses that you're supposed to on the computer? Like, do you have a prescription that maybe you need there? Um, you know, other risk factors would be underlying dry eye, maybe that you already had that's getting worse. Um, but definitely, like I said, directly correlates uh, with dryness too. Um, like I said, that infrequent blinking um, will just really affect your tear film. And if you don't have a good solid tear film, then light's not going to refract into your eye and can definitely cause blurry vision, but also all the other symptoms that come along with dry eye as well. Well, excellent information, Dr. Brogdon. And so now we've uh, you've diagnosed digital eye strain for your patient. Uh, we know, have all the symptoms. We know what's going on. So now uh, what are the treatment options that should, are available for digital eye strain? So as far as treatment options, the number one thing would just be being aware that you have some digital eye strain um, and knowing you know what that feels like. Um, so that you can in intervene, um, but also making sure you've got the proper correction in your glasses. And you have to remember, um, sometimes patients forget that our computer distance is a little further away than our reading distance. So it's actually sometimes a different prescription. So sometimes people will have a separate prescription for far away, up close, and it's actually even different on the computer. So if they've got like a progressive addition lens, like a no line bifocal or maybe just glasses just for the computer, just making sure that we've got them set up for that specific distance. Um, and then if there is some dry eye going on as well, uh, making sure that we're addressing that, whether it's with at-home therapy or an in-office procedure. Oh, perfect. And uh, I did want to follow up one last question about that. Uh, do you also recommend artificial tears for your patients as well in office? Definitely. Um, you know, artificial tears don't have like a therapeutic effect and like there's no medicine. I always say it's like lotion. It's just lubricating. So um, sometimes I'll have my patients keep some artificial tears at their desk and I'll say, you know, maybe you remember when you're logging in, like go ahead and just put a drop in um, in the morning and then maybe at lunch just to give you that extra lubrication. So Dr. Brogdon, if digital eye strain is untreated or if we don't, if we don't listen to it, don't do anything about it, what can happen? So long-term effects would just be overall dryness and irritation that just continues to get worse over time. And then that kind of impacts your day-to-day -day life. If you spend eight to 12 hours on a computer or a digital device all day and your eyes are dry and hurting, um, then that can really affect all aspects of your life. Um, or you've got a headache or eye strain. Um, and then that affects of blue light too that we don't always talk about can affect your, your sleep habits. And overall, I mean, if you're tired and your eyes hurt and you've got a headache, then you may not be the best person to be around. So uh, it can definitely affect your interpersonal relationships, too. So it, it can definitely have a big impact on your life, especially those who spend so much time um, on the computer. 
Excellent information, Dr. Brogdon. Thank you so much. And uh, when it comes to digital eye strain or in, in eye care, the eye care horizon in general, are there any new technologies or developments that are out there that we should be on the lookout for? I would definitely be on the lookout for computer screens that are going to be more high resolution, um, promote better contrast. Um, I think, I mean, I think we're definitely in that age right now where, um, you know, it's crazy to think about computers, you know, even 10 years ago, how many advances they've made and just the clarity of the screen and uh, just accessibility features uh, in general. Um, you know, as far as computers are concerned, or maybe even a screen that has anti-reflective already built in. Um, as far as glasses are concerned, um, there are lots of great things already on the market with blue light blocking technology, um, an aspheric design to help with computer eye strain, uh, and, of, and of course, anti-reflective coatings too. Um, and then the other thing that I was looking at, um, which, you know, I'm like, maybe this is something that I should invent, but it would be something that would be really cool if we could have some sort of like app you could download to your computer or your phone that would would prompt you to take breaks because I preach that 2020 rule, which has been around for a long time. Every 20 minutes, you're on a digital device, look 20 feet away for 20 seconds. So if you get, if we had some sort of um, app built into our phone that, you know, oh, we've been on here 20 minutes, it's time to take a break, um, would be something that would be really cool as well. Well, thank you for that information, Dr. Brogdon. And now before we leave today, was there anything else that you'd like to let our audience know about? I would just say, just keep up with your annual eye exams with your local optometrist and just express your concerns about how much time you're spending on devices. And we can look for those things that may be underlying, like an underlying dryness or problems with that focusing system or those eyes moving in and out together. Um, and then check to see, maybe you just need some computer glasses too. So I would say just keep up with those yearly eye exams um, is, is really the best thing you can do. Well, that's definitely good advice, Dr. Brogdon. Everybody, that was Dr. Shelby Brogdon. Dr. Brogdon, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me.